Hello, multi monologue minding muggles. Um, I'm Ralphie. Welcome to Ralphie Review 1006 here in the Bothy. And a big thank you to Falsgraf um, 7527 for providing a malt mention. And here in 1006 review, I'm going to be tackling uh, another whiskey I bought in the supermarket at a very affordable price. And you'll usually find it wherever it's selling at an affordable price as a single malt scotch whiskey because it is light, there's plenty of it, and it isn't particularly highly rated by your more seasoned whiskey drinkers. But despite this, it does have a certain cult status within the whiskey aficionado scene because it is an unassuming, unambiguous, simple, practical, accessible whisky, which by their own admission is smooth and balanced. I am not going to quibble with that. It's Glen Murray, the classic non-age statement, Speyside single malt whisky from a very attractive looking distillery, which is known for producing Light, I'm going to say it, relatively bland Scotch single malt whiskey. Now, before I go any further and before the hate starts, I'm saying relatively bland as an objective remark about the style of this single malt, about the smell and the taste. I'm not just criticising it because in the diverse portfolio of Scotch single malt whisky flavours there is room for a whisky which is not packed full of intense flavours, it's not heavily peated, it's not sherry monstery, it's not high ester, it's not big bulldozer notes of flavours that's going to shock your palate. It's the other end of the spectrum. It is very unassuming. It is gentle. It is soft. It is simple. Glen Murray ticks those boxes. Um, it has its fan club, by the way, because with its relatively lowly status and importantly, the affordability of this brand of single malt, it has its own subculture within the whiskey scene who are devoted fans of Glen Murray and they, they appreciate that it, it's, it's an uncomplicated scene supporting being a fan of this distillery. There's plenty of variety within it. There's just about 19 different versions of the whiskey, including age statements 12, 15, 18, 21 year old. Um, they're available at the moment. And then you get a whole range of different sherry matured Glen Murrays. You get some wine matured Cabernets. Matured is a good example. Um, and you get American oak. It can be called hard fired oak. Or you might even come across the twisted vine version that they do, which is in fact the Glen Murray matured in ex cognac casks. You see, when you've got a light, simple single malt, it tends to carry very well with the casks that it's put into for secondary maturation. You don't get a conflict arising between a, a big, powerful signature of a still and then a big powerful influence of a cask, which can work, but sometimes doesn't work. When you, when you have something as ubiquitously grainy and mildly barley sugar as Glen Murray, then the cask's quickly going to take over. And when you've got a good cask dominating, you can get a really good result. And occasionally there are some Glen Murray bottlings which achieve almost cult status within the whiskey scene. Uh, I've just poured a glass myself. In fact, I poured another glass earlier. And I I'm going to really kind of go into the nose and the taste here. How, what's, the, what's the best way of really introducing this? 
Glen Murray is to Scotch whisky what Jameson is to Irish whisky. There you go. Glen Murray is even more accessible for non whisky drinkers than if they bought Glen for a 12 year old. There you go. On the nose, anemic, light, clean, fresh. Nothing wrong with it. In fact, this is a well made whisky. It is properly, properly done. This, you can't deny it. It's just that there's not a lot happening on the nose. It's, to put it objectively, it's understated. Decent, but understated. To the point of being almost disinteresting to an experienced whiskey drinker who is used to to the likes of Lefroig and Kalilas and Edra Durs and Mortlachs and you know the big Glenfarclas, another good example, big flavoursome whiskies where you know the event comes out to slap you around the face. No, this is a whispering malt. Taste wise, mild very mild, mild sweet and sour, mild grain, mild barley sugar, mild soft, mild honey note with mild aftertaste. <laughs> you see where I'm going with this? I don't buy this very often but I'm reviewing it now because of the time of year. This is the time of year where the majority of whiskey sales are made to non-whiskey drinkers who are looking for something that's going to be safe to pour and see in the new year. That's not going to make them cough and splutter and that's not going to make smoke come out their ears. Um, and this is what Glen Murray does best. It is the quintessential, light, smooth, accessible, single malt Scotch whisky. Now I've poured a second glass for a simple reason, that when you put a few drops of water in, and by the way, unusually for me in this channel, you know, I've, I've not even put any water into this at all, because if you are adding water, the less the better, but I've added a few drops and literally we're talking a few drops to a glass of this that I poured about half an hour ago. So I'm going to compare the two because you don't expect much to happen but there are some subtle changes over time in the development of, of smell and taste within the glass. The nose becomes a little more oak infused, a little more brulee a little bit more interesting, some mild spices appear, they are mild, uh, a little bit of a fudgy note appears which isn't there when you first pour it in the glass. Definitely the citrus notes become a lot more prominent, a lot more zestiness is coming from the barley grain uh, and cereals, cereal, cereal soft sour notes, which it, it offsets without doubt, it offsets the blandness of the experience. And I know that sounds harsh, but it's more important than I, that I give you an honest review on my experience than try and be sanitizing it and rounding things off and, and, and kind of bigging up what is in fact the ultimate expression of a very simple single malt, which is why you will find it in the supermarkets cheaper than Johnny Walker, black label. Um, and I'm, furthermore, I'm going to recommend this ahead of Johnny Walker black label at the moment. I think that brand's really gone downhill badly. I think Johnny Walker black label's getting harsh. 
This isn't harsh. It's smooth and balanced, it says it on the label. They're right. I tell you what, all credit to Glenn Murray for their honesty. The, if you can, it's actually a good distillery to visit. It's an old distillery, it's over a hundred years old. It looks the part, it really does. You get a good tour, you'll notice the, there's things that and as an experienced whiskey drinker, you think to yourself, you know, if only, if they direct fire the stills, you know, if they put in an oil bath, direct fire the still, if they put in warm tubs for cooling, what difference would that make? Of course it would make a difference. It would richen it up more. But there again, in, in the spectrum of Scotch single malt whiskey, the, there really should be space for the gentle, quiet, whispering, soft malt. And that space, for me, is occupied at the moment, not by Glen Fiddich, but by Glen Murray. Um, I, I would describe it as underrated. I think some of the finishes are not great. I think others are really interesting. Uh, and if, if you get a chance to come across a whiskey fan who's one of the Glen Murray faithful, then you're gonna have a really interesting conversation and learn a lot from them. In the meantime, um, I last reviewed this whiskey to give you perspective. Back in November, two, one th November 2013. So I've last reviewed this 10 years ago, right? 10 years ago. Last time I even bought a bottle to review. Uh, that's where it is in my priorities list. And I'm just giving you the honest here. Um, my last review, 904, back in November 2021, was the 13 year old higher strength, interesting whiskey. It was one of these chameleon characters that Glen Murray can be. But I would conclude by saying that. If you're given a gift of this and you're an experienced whiskey drinker, it's a good gift to get because tea to have one of these, these malts, single malts that you can have for blending practice, when you add a wee drop of Kalila to this, where do you think the experience is going to go? I'll tell you, it's going to be absolutely positive. You can put a wee drop of Lagavulin into this. Will it work? Absolutely, because Glen Murray is the perfect light single malt vehicle for your own in-house blending, your teaspoon blending, your experimentation of, of putting single malts together and enhancing the sum of its parts. And you'll definitely get that frequently happening when you've got a Glen bottle of Glen Murray, inexpensive Glen Murray, unhyped Glen Murray, unglamorous Glen Murray, it's, it has its place. I've enjoyed this experience. This bottle will be, well, I'll spend my time doing some experiments with it. We drop of this with Laphroaig, not a lot, just a wee drop of Laphroaig, where will it go? It would be interesting to see if um, Glen Murray, being of such a light nature, was to bring in fresh wet casks from other distilleries to do their guest distillery additions. Now that would be interesting because it's not really done. Well, not publicly. So let's give this a malt mark. Inevitably, it's 40%, it's chill filtered, that does not help. Um, I'm just being realistic. Is it a bad whiskey? No. It's just a bland whiskey, actually. 77 out of 100, that's my malt mark. It looks low, but I can assure you there are whiskies out there that I would now put in the low 60s, even to the 50s now. That, you know, when it's a really bad made whiskey, um, I'm really tightening up in the marks because the time is right to do so. Thank you for watching. Hope you've enjoyed this. If you're a subscriber, it's lovely to see you again. If you're not a subscriber, please subscribe, leave a comment. I'll probably leave a heart when I pick up on it. And uh, I also have a Patreon channel that you might be interested in. The links are down below, along with the Online Scotch Whiskey Award official site, which I highly recommend 
you go to look and be inspired by before you buy your whiskies to see you into the new year. I'm Ralphie in the Bothy, somewhere in the Irish Sea, wishing you fond farewell until we meet again.